we have some extremely exciting news right there i'm looking at it right now 50 yards away is my brand new 2022 bass boat i can't say what brand it is yet but it's the boat i'll be fishing the 2022 bass master elite series on that unveiling video the rigging video everything will be up tomorrow on the channel 7 p.m should be on tuesday at 7 that video will be up check it out come back you'll see what bass boat i'm running next year but leave me a guess down below what bass boat do you think i'm running next year and you only got one day to go figure it out but anyways today we're going to talk about one of the most forgotten lures in bass fishing and that comes as no surprise it is a spinner bait you know <clears throat> back when i first started bass fishing that's a, one of the main baits everybody talked about it was a jig it was a shaky head and it was a spinner bait and you would see them all over the place all the time the spinner bait was kind of the bait that people would use when they wanted to cover water anything they wanted to wind the wind started blowing the pit of spinner bait they was fishing lay down trees that throw a spinner bait outside grass edges inside grass edges just throwing it down random clay banks random rock banks whatever if somebody wanted to cover water they would throw a spinner bait well I guess it was about 15, 16, 17 years ago, the Chatterbait came out. Let me reach in here and grab one. Everybody has seen this. This is a vibrating jig. This is the actual Jackhammer Chatterbait. This one that just came out maybe four years ago, something like that. This is just a half ounce white one. Just very, very standard. This bait came out and it kind of killed the spinnerbait. So what happened was the spinnerbait, like I said, was the bait that everybody used when they want to cover water. Well, when the Chatterbait came out, it had a lot of different properties to it. You could skip it a whole lot better, had a different vibration to it, had a different profile in the water, had a different presence, and it had more draw power. What that meant was that at the same exact time of year when the spinnerbait seemed to excel, the chatterbait excelled even more. So what happened, the bass had never seen it before, it just outfished a spinnerbait over and over and over again, it just seemed to outfish the spinnerbait. Well, now, all the bass and all the lakes have seen a chatterbait tons of times they've seen they've seen it they felt it they've been around it they've probably been caught on it and a spinnerbait has kind of fell off and what it has became is a very situational lure just like all lures in the tackle box there are certain situations when they seem to excel and now that's what the spinnerbait has became it's not to leave it on your front deck all the time and throw it every time you want to cover water bait now there's certain situations where it excels just like a square bill just like a little uh, medium diving crankbait a chatterbait whatever it is a swim bait whatever it is that's a situation where you need to pick that bait up so now i leave a spinnerbait on the front deck or at least in the rod locker most of the time and whenever i see that perfect situation i pick it up and i'm going to try to tell y'all today and explain to y'all why i pick it up and y'all can leave me a comment let me know when y'all throw it and the applications y'all like to apply the spinnerbait so i'm gonna just start off with showing y'all the run of the mill spinnerbait that i'm gonna leave tied on all the time all these spinnerbaits right here are Lost River Lures. If you want to check them out, they are they do have a Facebook page. It's Lost River Lures. So this is just your standard white skirt, little white swim bait, and it's a double nickel willow leaf spinnerbait. You know, this is a spinnerbait that I'm going to throw a ton, you know, just all throughout the year. If I got a little bit of stained water, if I'm just trying to imitate a little bit bigger shad or just a normal size shad and I feel like the fish is a little more aggressive, this is just the standard one that I'm going to throw when I'm trying to cover water. You can see... The wire is not twisted, the wire is open, and it's just got like the line tie that comes up and it's kind of round, but it's not twisted together. I'll show y'all what I mean right here. I'll grab one out that is twisted together. Let me see what I got. I got one right here that I actually took a blade off of myself because I was tweaking some stuff, but this is one that actually has a twisted line tie. So what you can see on this, this line tie right here is actually twisted. What that's going to do is going to do a couple of things, and this is a very important thing that, you know, I talk about is... Whenever you're trying to fish heavy cover, a lot of times these open line tie ones, they'll bend out, but they give you a lot more vibration. That twisted line tie, the one with the twist, that's going to be the one where I'm throwing 20, 22 pound fluorocarbon. I'm throwing in heavy cover. Whenever I set the hook on the fish, I'm going to horse them to the boat. I'm going to horse them out of the cover. I'm going to swing them in the boat, use a little bit heavier rod, a little bit faster reel, and I'm going to try to get those fish in the boat, like more power fishing than anything else. Now, on the normal spinner bait that I keep that has the more open line tie, that's going to be your open water bait. It's going to be your lighter cover bait. It's going to give it a little bit more vibration because this wire will flex a little bit more, not being twisted. It'll actually flex in and out and it'll create more vibration, but it will also bend. So just keep that in mind that if you've got one you're skipping under docks, you want to have that twist line tie. If you've got one you're just kind of throwing down the bank or whatever, you can use that open line tie and generate a little bit more vibration. So like I said, this is the standard one you want to leave on the front deck all the time. That's the one that people throw constantly now the next one since i'm already in the box of white ones and 
willow leaf blades. This is more of a fall time spinnerbait. This has a little bit smaller willow leaf blades. It's got a little bit smaller head on it. It's got a little bit thinner skirt on it. It's got a thinner wire on it. This is going to be the one you're trying to throw in October, November when the bait is extremely small. You're trying to reel the bait extremely fast and try to generate those reaction strikes. You're not trying to soak it in front of the fish. You're literally trying to, you know, burn it, make them react to it, make it look as similar to the bait as you possibly can, and then try to put it in front of as many fish as possible and cover a ton of water. Now, the reason we're talking about this is, as you can probably see over my shoulder, we've got some, you know, more stained water than normal. And this time of year, that's pretty typical. This is the time of year we start to get a lot of rain. The water starts to stain up. Those fish start to move shallow. When those fish get extremely shallow, I mean, when it's even super cold and the water gets stained up, those big females will pull up and try to sun on the stumps and the rocks and everything that you have in those shallow water, you know, like super shallow points, any kind of stumps, big rocks. And that's whenever I'm going to go to... In that situation, I'm going to try to go to a more of a Colorado leaf spinnerbait. Here's one right here if I can dig it out. Colorado blade spinnerbait. I don't think it's called a Colorado leaf, but what this does is this creates a ton of drag in the water. Obviously, I have a really bright color one on this one. I have chartreuse and white because I'm typically going to throw this whenever the water is stained. So it does have the open line tie. That's going to generate a little bit more vibration. It's got the big Colorado blades, and I'm going to put a really big swim bait trail on the back of this. Now, the reason I go with this profile, I'm trying to throw this around stumps, around rocks, everything I can this time of year, but the water temp's cold. The fish have a harder time seeing the bait, so I want those that big profile, those big blade, blades and all that stuff so that I can reel that bait extremely slowly and it has a really big presence in the water. Those fish can feel it from a long way away. Whenever the water's stained up, fish use their lateral line a whole lot more. They can feel the bait from further away. They can see it from further away because it's a bigger profile and it lingers and hangs in their face for a little bit longer being that big profile with the big blades. So that's exactly whenever I pick up a Colorado blade spinner bait. This time of year is the main time of year I throw it. After those fish kind of pull up and start getting a little bit closer to the spawn, the water typically starts to clear up. I'll go back to that double willow one that I showed you at first. You're trying to imitate shad and stuff like that. And I'll also pick up a dang swim jig a lot that time of year. But that's for a different day and a different video. So the last kind that I keep in my boat is I keep some painted blade spinnerbaits in the boat. And you can see this is one that is a twist line tie. And the reason I do this on these painted blade spinnerbaits is these are the ones where I'm not trying to look supernatural in clear water. I'm trying to throw this bait in the like heaviest cover around the thickest grass, whatever I'm fishing for, a lot of smallmouth, spotted bass, and largemouth. The smallies and the spots really seem to like the painted blades and even the largemouth do whenever it's a straight reaction bite. I want the muddiest water I can find. I'll use these painted blades and I feel like the fish can see it from even further and it even excels a little bit more whenever it's more of an overcast kind of day. It seems like these blades get a little bit of a glow to the water. And like I said, a spinnerbait has been one of the most tweaked lures of all times. There's all kinds of people that change the skirt on them. They change the blades on them, the wire. Everything is tweaked. So I like to keep a couple in my boat that's been tweaked a little bit. But that's just another thing that I keep is some painted blade stuff. Just to give them a little bit something different whenever I'm trying to go for just a major reaction strike. So those are kind of the applications where I you know, pick up kind of different spinner baits throughout the year. Like I said, just to kind of revisit that big Colorado blade spinner base one I'll be throwing right now because the water is stained and some of those big fish are moving up a little bit shallower and I want to hang in their face. But for the most part, if I'm trying to cover water and a little bit clear water, I'm gonna use that double willow because it does mimic the kind of the size of the shad and the fours that's in the lake. And with it being a little bit clear water, it looks more natural and it still has a lot of vibration and can draw those fish from a long way. So the spinner baits definitely kind of a forgotten lure but it does have some situations. I just was reminded of that today when I got to the lake and saw how muddy it was. I was thinking they'll probably bite that bait today. So I'm gonna make a quick video on it and let y'all know. So leave me a comment below. Let me know the applications when y'all use a spinner bait. Now we're about to go wind these suckers around in the brand new daggone bass boat. So let's roll.